All right, this lesson is all about lines. Uh, so we're talking about a linear equation today. And linear equations always have the degree of 1, meaning it's x to the first. So x to the first is always linear. x squared is quadratic. x cubed would be cubic. We're always talking about linear functions. And this can be written in the form ax plus by is equal to c. And when we use this uh, standard form, a, b, and c are typically integers. And a is always greater than 0 or positive. And neither a or b, they're not both equal to 0. One can be zero, but not both. So this form is usually called standard. Standard form or general form. And if we're given it in that form, first example says sketch the graph of 5x minus 2y is equal to 10. Typically the easiest way to graph something like this is to plot its intercepts. Meaning we're gonna find the y-intercept by letting x equal zero. Plug in and zero for x, we get negative two y equals 10, or y is equal to negative five. So I'm gonna plot that point there. And then if we plug in uh, y equals zero, we get five x equals 10, or x is equal to two. We've plotted both of those intercepts there. And let's see if we can label that. There's two, there's negative five and the line that goes through both of those points, that is our equation, 5x minus 2y is equal to 10. Slope of this line, clearly if you just look at the graph, you can see it goes up 5 over 2 or 5 halves, rise over run. But in general, the quick way to calculate slope when it's written in, in standard form is always going to be negative a over b. If you look at this example here, we would have had negative 5 over negative 2, or 5 halves, and you can see that matches with what we got graphically. All right, next form is the one you're probably most familiar with. It's called slope-intercept form. and y equals mx plus b. This is the one they drill into your head since the first day of algebra. So slope, or our value of m, is always going to be equal to the number in front of your, or the coefficient in front of your linear term. We get negative one-third as the slope in this example, and the y-intercept is b. We have a positive one as the y-intercept. So I'm going to say that is my y-intercept right there. I'm going to go down 1 over 3. Do not go to the left ever. Here's such a quick graph. We've got that line. All right, the third form of a line. Uh, this is the one you will use 95% of the time. Please make sure you know how to utilize this. This is point slope form. y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. And again, what we're saying is the, the point it goes through is x sub 1, y sub 1. And our slope, obviously, is m. So we're given these two things. We should be able to write the equation in that line. So looking at this example here, our slope is going to be equal to, looks like, 1 third. And remember, it's y minus y sub 1. And so the point here, the y coordinate is 1, and the x coordinate is going to be negative 1. It's, it's x minus negative 1. So we've got that point there. That's negative 1, 1. Let's label that. And we've got a slope of 1 third, which means we go up 1 over 3. One, two, three, and we've got another point 
and the line that goes through is our equation. And again, just to make sure you recognize rise over run, delta y over delta x, meaning change in y over change in x. And given two points on a line, x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, y sub 2, the slope is simply the difference in your y coordinates or the rise over the difference in your x coordinates or the run. All right, special cases are horizontal lines and vertical lines. Please do not forget uh, which one is which. If you are ever in doubt, think about this diagram right here. A horizontal line has a slope of zero. So a horizontal line has a slope of zero and is always going to be y equals some constant. A vertical line is always has a slope that is undefined and as the equation x is equal to c where c is a constant. So in this case this would be y equals a and x is equal to b. All right, two quick notes on parallel and perpendicular lines. Uh, if they're parallel, remember that they have the same slope. And that means that the slope from line one it has to equal the slope from line two. And if they're perpendicular, they have opposite reciprocal slopes. So we'll say opposite reciprocal slopes. And really what that means is if the first slope is m sub 1, we take the reciprocal, which would be 1 over m sub 1, and take the opposite, change the sign. Other thing you want to point out is that if they are opposite reciprocals, if you multiply them together, multiply the two slopes together, if they're opposite reciprocals, you will always get negative 1. So make sure you know both of those uh, for the perpendicular ones. All right, next page. On example one, uh, it says use the given slope and given point to find two additional points on the line. You can do this algebraically, or you can do it graphically. Um, we'll kind of do a little bit of a combination. I've got this point plotted, negative 2, 3, and we know the slope is 2. And again, that means 2 over 1, meaning we're going to go up 2 over 1. From our point, negative 2, 3, we're going to go up 2 over 1. That's over 1, up 2. And it looks like that new point is going to be negative 1, 5. We could continue doing this. We could go up over here and go over 1, up 2. This new point would be 0, 7. Or we could have gone the other way. Could have gone down 2 over 1. And we would have been at the point negative 3, 1. But that would be the graphical approach to that. All right, second problem. I've got this drawn over here on, in the diagram. We've got y sub 1 is equal to 2x. And we have a perpendicular line at the point 1, 2. So we know it's perpendicular at that point. We have enough information to be able to figure this out. We know it's perpendicular, so if the slope of the first line is 2, the slope of the second line has to be the opposite reciprocal. So we know the slope. We also know it goes through the point 1, 2. So we know a point, we know a slope, we should use point slope form. I'm just going to plug in what I know. I get y minus 2 is negative 1 half times x minus 1. Leave it like that, don't multiply it out. They did not ask you to solve for y. All right, this example, we're going to use slopes to show that this quadrilateral is, in fact, a rectangle. 
And I've graphed this, all these points over in the, on the graph on the far left. Let's see if we can prove this algebraically. Let's calculate the slope of each of these segments. First off, the slope of AB. Make sure you show what you're doing. And you can just say the slope of AB, or we can simply use subscripts and we can say slope AB. And we're going to see the rise over the round or difference in your y coordinates. 3 minus 0 and 2 minus negative 1 or 2 plus 1. 3 over 3 winds up being 1. Go ahead and repeat this process for the other three. All right, so it looks something like this. We get four slopes, one, negative one, negative one, and one respectively. And just to show that these are, a, in fact, a rectangle, let's make a few statements here. We're going to say that segment AB is perpendicular to segment AC. And let's say AC is perpendicular to CD. BD is perpendicular to AB, and BD is also perpendicular to CD. And because of this, we can say we have four right angles. Creates a rectangle. All right, last example. We've got a business that has some fixed costs and some variable costs. It looks like we're manufacturing jeans. We have a fixed daily cost of $500 and a variable cost of $8 for each pair of jeans. So we're going to write a linear equation that relates to daily costs in dollars of manufacturing x number of genes. So if no genes are manufactured, and again we're talking about x, c would be your x and y coordinates respectively. So if we don't manufacture any, we still have a cost that's fixed of $500. So zero genes are manufactured, we still spend $500. One pair of jeans, we have to add the cost for $8 for one pair of jeans, so we're going to spend a total of 508, meaning 1, 508 would be the next point in the graph. Two pairs of jeans, 16 total dollars spent on jeans, looks like we've got 516, so 2, 516. So you can look at these points and you can write a linear equation based upon it. You can use a point slope or point. Uh, slope calculation, or you can simply say our cost in terms of the number of genes we're manufacturing, we have a fixed cost of $500 and we pay $8 for every pair of genes. So here is our fixed portion, here is our variable portion. So we're to say 500 plus 8x, and so I'm going to say this is x and 500 plus 8x, or c of x is 8x plus 500. All right, go ahead and use this to answer the two, the two questions down below. When you are answering these questions, make sure you use proper notation. We know that we are using c of x, so c of 400 shows that you are manufacturing 400 pairs of genes. We're going to substitute in 400 for x, so 8 times 400 plus that fixed cost of 500, you get 3,200 plus 500, or with units, $3,700. All right, now we have a total cost of 6,420. We know that is our total cost. I'm going to plug in everything else and we'll solve. Subtract 500, we get 5,920. 
and dividing that by 8 looks like we get 740 make sure you include units I'm going to say 740 genes